I'm Stephanie Lugo, ex-corporate 9 to fiver turned top producing realtor and coach. Along the way to growing a top 1% attraction-based real estate business, I became obsessed with all things marketing systems, scaling, and social. But it wasn't always easy, and I remember what it felt like to lack the confidence, direction, and know-how to make it happen. So I created the Market Authority Show to share simple, actionable, step-by-step help and inspiration to build your dream real estate business with help from timeless principles and today's cutting-edge strategies. Here, we always keep it real and never shy away from the topics that you are dying to know more about but can never get a straight answer to. Clients, growth, family balance, failure, and how to navigate an ever-changing real estate industry are just a few of the topics that we're going to tackle together. Whether you're just starting out on your real estate journey or you've been around for a while, we've got a few tricks up our sleeve that you'll want in on and all are welcome here. So let's dive in. Lugo, and welcome back to the Market Authority Show, where I am helping new and experienced real estate agents move away from feeling lost and overwhelmed by providing the structure, guidance, and systems needed to gain confidence, achieve their income and production goals, and get back their time with systemized business operations. So it's been a challenging year for a lot of real estate agents. The market has shifted, and these days, every opportunity counts. In today's episode, we're going to discuss how real estate agents can thrive in any market, whether it's a buyer's market, a seller's market, or something in between. So with the market being slower and the market being a little bit down, as we like to say, it went through a correction after the crazy frenzy over the last couple of years, I feel like a lot of real estate agents are concerned and discouraged, especially if you got into the business sometime after 2020. So for me, I got into the business in 2014, 2015. And honestly, the market was not as good then as it was today. Not that my experience should be that different or compared to yours, right? Like you, everybody has their own unique experience. But when I got into the business, we were still in recovery, right? The recession was still kind of felt. We were just getting past the low of the low points. And my market, Phoenix, was absolutely decimated by the Great Recession. I mean, we were one of the hardest hit parts of the country. And because of that, it took an extremely long time for our market to get back to a sense of normalcy. And when I left my corporate nine to five, people were looking at me and my husband, who I joined in real estate, like we were totally nuts for giving up that quote unquote safety and security of our corporate finance jobs to get into real estate, which was still barely recovering even back in 2015. The market then was really slow. Homes would take three to six months to sell. It was really challenging kind of navigating a new business during those days. But what I found was that when the market is down, that's where the opportunity is. Most millionaires today were made in the last recession and in the last downturn. And if we even look back to more recently in 2020, when there was a massive bust of the stock market, even for a short amount of time when news of the pandemic broke out, so many people made buku bucks during that time just by trading in the market. Now, obviously, we can't compare trading in the stock market to real estate directly, but that just goes to show that there is so much opportunity when the market is down. In going through these experiences as a business owner, I truly, truly believe that our best opportunities for business growth and success happen during times like this, when the market is slow and when we have time to lay the foundation for huge growth. Like you're not growing at the top of the market. You're not growing when things are in frenzied conditions. Yeah, you might be selling, but you're really ultimately building off of whatever actions you took place before those market conditions hit. And maybe even at the worst, you're really just taking advantage of whatever luck is coming your way during those market conditions. But you and I know that we can't rely on luck to build a sustainable and scalable real estate business. And that's why when I'm looking at the market as it is today, 
I'm recording this in June of 2023. Things are a little slow. Things are not dire by any means, by the way. We're actually showing 9% appreciation year to date here in my market. Things have recovered very quickly since our low point in November. There's just a lot of slower paced business happening. And to me, this feels like 2017, 2018. This feels like the market that we were really coasting on and thriving in before things got super nuts at the end of 2019 and into 2020. This is a great time to be in real estate. And I know I keep saying it, but there's opportunity everywhere you look. And so maybe this is just me going on a little bit of a mindset moment tangent, but I feel like so many real estate agents are talking about navigating an unpredictable market, navigating the market shift, navigating uncertainty. Realistically, we need to be looking at the positives in the situation and see this for what it is. This is a time for you to invest into exponential growth because what we are going to be seeing over the next couple of years, and I know this is something that a lot of people are talking about in this space, we are going to be seeing a weeding out of a lot of bad players in the real estate industry. We're going to see a reduction in the number of licensees. People are going to leave the business and it's going to be the people who don't need to be in the business. It's going to be licensees who got their license just to sell their own house and maybe help out their brother or a friend. It is going to be real estate agents who aren't in this for the long run. But if you're a real estate agent who's in this for the long run and who sees the massive opportunity to create a business and a life that you love using real estate as a vehicle to get there, this is your time. And so what I want to talk about is how we can overcome competition in this market and how we can really set ourselves up on a trajectory to take massive action that is going to contribute to our greater success down the line. Because if you get into this business and you stay in for more than a couple of months, you might have known or you might have realized by now that this is a long game. You get into real estate to play the long game and it's not a get rich quick scheme by any means. Yes, you can make money very quickly in real estate, but the real value of starting a business and being in real estate full time or for the long run is for the long term opportunities that you can create. And so from that perspective, I want to share a little bit of what we can do in these next couple of months and in the next year to set ourselves up for massive success. I want to talk first about acknowledging competition, right? Like I I just want to acknowledge that, yes, we are in a very competitive time. And when you are feeling pressure in the real estate market right now, what you are feeling is just a lower sales volume. That means there are just fewer transactions happening in most markets at this time. Now, you might still feel like things are pretty fast paced. You might still be finding yourself in some multiple offer situations. You might still um, be seeing some resistance from sellers to negotiate. That's because supply is still low and demand relative to supply is still kind of high. And as long as we're going to have those forces, we're going to still feel a little bit of that pressure when it comes to the actual sales process in real estate. But overall, the slowness that most real estate agents are feeling is as a result of a lower transaction volume from what we've had over the last couple of years. And it's obvious when you think about it, right? Over the last couple of years, everybody had a reason to buy or sell. You weren't having to go through and convince people to make a move. Everybody knew why they needed to make a move. People were buying because they were pretty secure in their jobs for the most part. Employment has been very, very strong. And interest rates were at historically low levels. Sellers were taking advantage of the frenzied market conditions, and they were able to cash out massive equity from their homes and then still take advantage of buying on the other end with very low interest rates if they chose to do that. Maybe some other sellers decided just to hang on to their properties anyways, refinance into a low interest rate, and then move into a new home if they needed to upgrade and rent out their old one or move it into a short-term rental, right? You know this, I know this, we've seen this happen enough times over the last couple of years to understand what's actually happening here. But now that interest rates are a lot higher and the Fed is trying to pump the brakes on the inflation that we're seeing today in the U.S. economy, 
Obviously, that is going to tamper the number of people who are looking to make a move, right? And not to point fingers, but I will say that a lot of real estate agents made it their one and only market marketing message over the last several years that, hey, it's historically low interest rates. Now is the best time to buy. And if you miss the boat on this, you'll waste your opportunity to cash in an amazing purchase, right? Like, how do you recover your marketing after relying on that message for years when the, when the interest rates go up? Like, how do you come back from that? How do you create a compelling reason for buyers to go ahead and make a confident move? Of course, people are on the fence now that they're seeing their affordability impacted by the interest rates. Now, obviously, that doesn't mean nobody is making a move. We're seeing transactions happen. There is still demand to purchase homes. And the reason for that is because people always need a place to live. People are always going to be transacting real estate because it's one of those things that's just part of daily life where everybody needs a place to be. And it's also still a really safe and secure investment. So people are always going to want to prioritize purchasing over something like renting if they're able to and if it makes sense for them. Now, obviously, with all of this going on, competition is going to be a natural part of that. And as the market was so hot and frenzied over the last couple of years, a lot of new agents saw the opportunity and got licensed to jump in and make hay, right? So as that happens, yes, there is rising competition. Industries all have competition and real estate is no exception. And there's always going to be other agents vying for the same clients and properties. And you're going to feel that more in a market like now when that transaction volume is lower. See, I promise I was going somewhere with giving you a little background on where the market is. But this doesn't mean that you can't be successful too. I truly believe that there is always going to be enough business for everyone, especially in real estate. The key is to focus on what you can control and make the most of the opportunities that are available to you. And as I've already shared a couple of times through this conversation, there are so many opportunities available to you if you know where to look. While there is a lot of competition out there, I wonder how much it even really matters. I wonder how much it matters how many licensees are in your area or how many agents your clients know. Because I would argue that in a market like this, the hardest competition to outmaneuver is actually yourself. In my experience working with real estate agents and coaching them, especially through this market shifts, when the market changes, it's not necessarily the challenges that come with it that hold them back. It's not the challenges of getting clients off the fence. It's not the challenges of pivoting their marketing. It's how those agents respond to the adversity that they face in those tough markets that make the difference. Because especially what I'm seeing right now, but just in general, when things get tough, some agents want to bury their head in the sand and some pull themselves up and take courageous action even when things feel hard. That's just what it comes down to. When there are a ton of other agents that you're competing with or new objections that trip you up, how are you responding? Do you take a step back? Do you analyze the situation? And do you come up with creative solutions or learn new skills to overcome whatever obstacles are in your way? And I guess my point is in acknowledging competition and overcoming competition, my point is just don't worry so much about what the market is doing. Don't worry so much about the no's and the rejections that you're hearing from clients or prospects. You have to focus at least as much on your own actions and your mindset as you are on the market. And so let's talk about some ways that we can do that. Now, we can always focus on your own unique strengths. And one concept that I talk about frequently is we're not door openers. We're not here just to open doors. We're not here just to facilitate a transaction. Instead of comparing yourself to other agents, really truly focus on what makes you stand out. This could include your expertise in a certain area, your marketing skills, or your ability to connect with clients on a really personal level. Like if connection is a huge part of who you are and why you got into this business, lean into that because other agents might not know how to do that. You might have transferred into this industry from a completely different field And because of that, you might have really interesting transferable skills that come very natural to you, but are totally overlooked by others who don't have those same skills. 
So by understanding what those are, by taking a minute to just self-reflect and learning how to emphasize those unique strengths and selling points, you'll be way better positioned to attract clients and close deals in any market. Because again, it doesn't matter what the market is doing. People are always going to be buying and selling real estate. Your job is to figure out where they are in that cycle of homeownership, what challenges they're facing in that process, and how you yourself can position yourself as a real estate agent that is perfectly ready to help them navigate those waters. So if we're talking about a few tips on how to identify and capitalize on those unique strengths, there's a few things that we can think of. We can, number one, reflect on past transformations with our clients and what contributed to them, right? Like if you think back to your ideal clients, those clients who are major success stories, you want like 10 or 20 more of them every single year. What about that process made it click so well? What about where they were at in that cycle of homeownership made you so perfectly positioned to help them? Maybe you have a heart for education and connection. And because of that, you just really click with first time homebuyers and you're so excited to help first time homebuyers navigate that process and get to that place of confidence and clarity. Maybe you have been a caretaker for an elderly parent or a family member, and you understand the challenges that come with downsizing and moving your entire life into this next transition phase, and you love being able to help others in that demographic downsize and go into that whole process, right? Like that is a massive market that's going through a huge shift in our country right now that is a huge demographic that we can be serving. And if you have that personal connection and if you've gone through that experience and you understand what it's like to navigate that process and and have to liaise with all of the other industries and trades that go along with it, like that might be a transferable skill that could really serve those who are going through the same process but don't have the same access to that information. I know that's a really niche example, But do you see how we can take some of these experiences, look a little deeper into what made them work so well, and then learn how to use that to position ourselves by focusing on those unique strengths? The other thing that we can do is we can ask for feedback. I think so often when we are in business, especially as real estate agents, one thing that I hear from real estate agents that I'm mentoring is they're terrified of being asked a question that they don't know the answer to, especially in the beginning. And as a new real estate agent, there's so much pressure on you to present yourself in a certain way. And that's one thing that holds new agents back the most is just not knowing what they don't know and being afraid of being asked something and looking like a deer in the headlights, right? I want to challenge that narrative. I think that we put way too much pressure on ourselves to know everything. And I think that we don't often enough go to our clients to get feedback and support from them. I would really challenge you to go to your past clients or go to other homeowners in your database or sphere and ask them what's most important to them in terms of homeownership or working with a realtor. If you do have great past clients and you want like 10 or 20 more of those types of clients, go back to them and say, what did you love most about this experience of working with me? What did I do that really stood out and made you feel like you had made a great decision in in hiring me? Right? Like if you're a newer agent, you can ask the same for those who have already gone through this process who are currently homeowners and ask what they loved or hated about their experience with working with their real estate agent. And you can take this information to help guide you on your marketing. So again, that you can position yourself as strongly as you can, especially during a time when your positioning and marketing matters so, so very much. Because right now in a slower market, when we're seeing lower transaction volume, when every deal matters so much, when there is so much competition for all the same uh, clients and deals, the way that you stand out and the way that you continue to close deals is by understanding how to articulate somebody, why somebody should hire you over your competition. And without understanding what they care about, what buyers and sellers in your market or your target market care about, you won't be able to speak to them in a way that's going to convince them to hire you. And so again, that goes to the next tip that I have, which is constantly and consistently be honing those skills and investing in professional development. 
Like if you've never had to learn how to market yourself and take that feedback from clients and spin that into a marketing message, this is the time that you should be working on those things. When it's slow is when we want to be investing in these skills that ultimately help us succeed and avoid slowness again in the future the next time there's a market shift. The other thing that we could be doing right now is really leaning into a strong brand and online presence. And we know that having a strong digital brand and a social media presence is important. Like, I think that we all have accepted that as a part of life at this point. I hope so anyways. But today, with so many agents competing for attention, especially on the online space, it is so important to make sure that you stand out online. Now, from the previous tip that I had in focusing on your unique strengths and continuing to gain feedback and insights from your past clients, that's really going to help you create a strong brand. And in fact, this is something that we do heavily in the Market Authority Academy. Part of why my agents in the Market Authority Academy are so very skilled at converting clients, whether they're new or very, very seasoned, is because they've taken the time to do a couple of different things through my curriculum. They take the time to define their brand identity, which includes their mission values and unique selling points. The reason this is so important is because this is that human aspect Right. Like when you get into real estate, everybody says, oh, it's a relationship business. You have to have that no like trust factor for clients to want to work with you. That's absolutely true. But how do you create that? Like, how do you how do you create that into the architecture of your very business? You start by developing that brand and your brand identity is going to rely on a strong mission values and your unique selling points. So if you don't already have those pieces, that might be a cue to start figuring out how to build that in to your brand presence. You also want to make sure that you're investing time into your social presence in general. Like where are clients in your area looking up agents to vet them online? Where do they want to see reviews from you? Do you have agent pages on the right search websites like Zillow and Realtor.com, for example? Today, even if you refer to clients, it doesn't matter how much experience you have or how much your referring agent hypes you up or your referring friend rather hypes you up. If that person can't find you online and like have your online presence corroborate that story, they're going to go somewhere else because they trust what they see online to back up whatever they've heard about you. And whatever they've heard about you has to match up with what they see through your social media presence, through your YouTube channel, through your website, through agents review pages. It's just a fact of life. And before you get upset about it, I argue that you're probably doing the very same thing to other professionals. This is just a part of how to have a successful business today. And finally, yes, we do need to stay active on social media. We need to share valuable content. We need to engage with our audience. It doesn't have to be everything, but we do have to recognize that our database, the people we want to do business with, the people we want referrals from, the people that we meet out in the public who can refer us to other business owners, to other professionals in the area, all of those individuals are spending a lot of time on social media, whether they admit it or not. And so while it doesn't have to become your whole identity, you should be leaning into social media a little bit. And if you've really struggled with nailing down a social media content strategy that makes sense for you, now is the time to invest in that while things are slow. Now, the other thing that we can be doing while the market is slow or while you have the time is just networking and building relationships. I just mentioned that relationships are key to any successful real estate business, and it is so true. I don't understand why, if you get into the real estate business or if you're trying to revive a slow business, why so many realtors want to start off by connecting with strangers. I don't understand why that is like the most common first step that they take when they're trying to get things going. It is so much harder to convince strangers to want to like you than it is to reach out to your existing database. And so if your business is slow and if you're not seeing those referrals and those past clients come through, I would argue that there's a lot more that you can do to connect with the the database and the network that you already have. And it would be way more impactful to build those relationships instead of trying to go through cold call lists or buying leads or sitting at open houses, which again, I mean, there's a lot of opportunity there for sure in open houses because you can establish those relationships. But 
I would say if you are not seeing those referrals come through and that repeat business come through this year, figure out why that is. Have you taken a pause on your marketing to your database? Are you not reaching out to and connecting with your people in the same way? Have you kind of retreated a little bit because you were fearful of the market and what that meant for your future? Remember, even the people who have just purchased a home with you in the last year or two might need to buy and sell again in the future. And it might be way sooner than you think. I am always shocked when a past client of mine comes back up and looks to sell their home after they've been in it in less than two years. It happens all the time. Surely not as often as some of my clients who have been in their homes for longer. But don't just assume because you've just helped somebody buy or sell that they don't need your help with something in that cycle of homeownership in the meantime. And by the way, there's a lot of ways that we can serve our existing database of homeowners, whether they're people who have already purchased their home before you got into the business or with another agent or who have purchased with you in the last few years. There are so many other ways that you can be serving them that don't have anything to do with getting them into houses and showing homes and listing their house. There are so many ways that you can help support them. And I would really challenge you to think about what that has looked like for you up until now. Have you been that agent who closes a deal and then kind of ghosts them and they don't hear from you for years? That is a huge way that you can invest in your business just by putting those those strategies together to reconnect with that database and avoid losing contact with them again in the future. What we like to see with our real estate agents in the Market Authority Academy is a conversion rate upwards of 20%. So in that first year that you start really marketing to your database, you might see somewhere between 8 and 15% conversion, which would be 8 to 15 deals from your database. And that is direct deals from them, like working directly with people you already know and getting referrals. What we want to see is you continuing to grow that up close to 20% over the years as you continue to nurture that database. And just by numbers, you can see how that can very quickly become a hugely lucrative part of your marketing strategy with very little monetary investment. And this is a great time to be investing into that part of your business. But of course, investing in strategies and marketing and even some advertising, if you do choose to do that, is only one way that we can invest in our growth in a slow market. It's honestly really easy to become complacent when the market is slow and when you don't feel a lot of external pressure to get things done. But that is precisely when you should be doubling down on your growth and development. By investing in yourself during slower periods, you're really setting the foundation for future success for when the market picks back up. So here are a few other ways that we can do this and leverage investing in our own growth for more success down the line. Number one, you're able to stay ahead of the curve the more you're investing in yourselves and learning new skills. So maybe, like I said, earlier, this is the time that you really hone in on your database marketing. Maybe this is the time that you invest in your your content strategy and start a YouTube channel and you really finally master video. By just continuously learning and growing, you're going to be so much better equipped to adapt to changing market conditions. And you will even be able to capitalize on new opportunities because just by taking action, you are going to create your own new luck And you're going to have better luck over time because action is going to beget action. Along with that, you can really take this time to improve your skills and services. And I've spoken about this a little bit, but just use this extra time to refine your skills. And again, if you're a newer agent, if you've gotten into the business after 2019 or after 2020, so you've been in the business for about three years or less now, you haven't really had to learn the skills that are actually necessary in real estate. You haven't had to learn a lot about negotiation. You haven't had to learn a lot about how to get somebody off the fence or move them from the place of, I don't know, should I buy to I'm definitely going to buy this year. Those are skills that you can hone on. So use the extra time to refine those skills, learn new techniques, or even just expand who it is you're serving, which is going to make you even more valuable to your clients. And finally, now is the time to maintain a positive mindset. I know it can be a bummer going from like super high highs in the market to kind of a more semblance of normalcy or low even in some areas. But now is the time when you can focus on that growth and self-development and you can really keep that positive outlook even during challenging times. 
if anything, let's say this is like the worst year you've ever had. (laughs) If anything, and it is the worst year ever, you are going to have so many opportunities to train for resilience. If you're going to make it in business for yourself, whether you're in real estate or any other industry, this is a time when you want to be training for resilience because resilient people win. Resilient real estate agents win. Resilient business owners win. Resilience is a skill that is necessary in the world that we live in today. And this is an amazing opportunity to train for resilience. And let me tell you, while I like to share a lot about the success that I've had in real estate, every single success that I have had has come on the back of multiple failures, lessons learned, and crying on the bathroom floor moments. Okay, so this is the time to really invest in that slow market Maybe get a mentor or a coach if you haven't yet. Look at what skills you can refine. And if anything, just be grateful for the opportunity to grow stronger. That wraps up today's episode. Whether it's a buyer's market, a seller's market, or somewhere in between, you have the power to thrive as a real estate agent just by focusing on your unique strengths, building relationships, and investing in your growth. Remember, lucky agents create their own luck. This is something we say in the Market Authority Academy all the time. And you have everything you need. You are exactly where you are meant to be in this moment. All you have to do is take action. And a lot of times that action might start with you. So look within, see what skills we can refine and start to put a plan in place because the faster you take action and get away from the feeling of being paralyzed by fear in the market, the quicker you'll start creating more momentum that is just going to invest in your success down the line. And as always, I am rooting you on every step of the way. Thanks so much for tuning in. Until next time, keep on crushing it. Thanks for tuning in. A high five on taking some time to invest in yourself and in your business. If you're looking for more, head over to the show notes to find all the details and links to resources mentioned in this episode of the Market Authority Show. And if you're looking to find a new crew of like-minded pros to ask questions and bounce ideas off of, head over to the marketauthorityacademy.com to join my exclusive community on Facebook, check out my latest free masterclass and tons of bonus content, or apply to my mentorship program to learn how I can help you triple your business this year. Until next time, keep on crushing it.